All right, guys, so in this example here, we have refrigerant 134A or R134A entering into an evaporator. We have the temperature at negative 4 degrees Celsius, and we have the quality of 20%, and then we have a velocity of 7 meters per second. We're told at the exit, we're going to have the refrigerant leave as a saturated vapor with a temperature of negative 4 degrees Celsius, so the temperature does not change. Um, we have a constant diameter across the whole evaporator flow channel. We're given the mass flow rate as 0.1 kilograms per second, and we're going to be looking for the diameter of the evaporator's flow channel in centimeters, as well as the velocity of the exit in meters per second. So I'm just going to model this as a horizontal pipe like this. We'll have our inlet here on the left and our exit here on the right. And of course, we're working with R134A. So we're going to have an inlet here, an exit here. And we'll write down what we're given. So we have T1 equals negative 4 degrees Celsius. We have X1 equals 0 0.2. And we have V1 for velocity, of course, denoted by that arrow or that vector equal to 7 meters per second. Now at the exit, we were told we have T2 equals negative 4 degrees Celsius. And we have X2 equals 1.0 or just 1. We'll say that our mass flow rate M dot equals 0 0.1 kilograms per second. And we have D1 equals D2, as it's a constant diameter across this whole pipe. And that's actually one, th one of the things that we're looking for is going to be D. So we'll just call that, we'll say D1 equals D2, which just equals D. And that's going to be some number in centimeters. And we're also looking for that velocity 2. And it's going to be some number in meters per second. Now, to find that diameter, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this relationship and start with that the density equals the mass divided by the volume. That should be something that everyone knows is that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now, because the mass is given as a mass flow rate being m dot, we're going to have that density equals m dot divided by v dot, which is going to be the volumetric flow rate. Now, what we need is we need the area because if we can get the variable for area, then we can derive the diameter. So what I, what I do know is that the volumetric flow rate here is equal to, that there is equal to the velocity times area, right? Because you have meters per second times uh, meters squared, and you get M3 per second, which is what this is, which is what the volumetric flow rate is. So I'll make that substitution here, and we'll have that the density equals mass flow rate divided by the velocity uh, times the area of a pipe. And now for, in terms of density, how can I take care of that? Well, density is actually just the reciprocal of the specific volume. So if we have, den if we replace the density with the specific volume, because density equals one divided by the specific volume, what we could do is we could say one divided by specific volume equals this whole mess on the right. And if we just look for the specific volume, we just flip both sides, and then therefore you have the velocity times the area divided by the mass flow right here. Now, we need to further break this down because we're looking for the diameter. We're not looking for the area. So the diameter of a circular pipe would be area equals pi r squared, or what I like to use is pi d squared over 4. I'll let you do the math out. You'll know that these two equations are equivalent. And so now I'm going to make the substitution here, and we're going to have this final equation here of specific volume equals velocity times area, which is pi d squared over 4. And that's all divided by your mass flow rate. Now, you could leave this as your final equation and start to plug in your numbers, or you could solve for the diameter. Um, I guess just for clarity, why don't we go ahead and solve for the diameter? So we'll have that the diameter equals multiply by the mass flow rate first. So you have specific volume times mass flow rate. And now you're going to multiply it by 4. I'll throw the 4 in front here. Divide that by the area, or by pi, I'm sorry. And now you want to take the square root of this whole thing here. So let me clean that up a little bit. And I almost forgot, you also have to divide by that velocity there. So we'll have that right here on the bottom. So this is your equation for solving for that diameter. So now let's plug in what we have. So we have the square root of 4 times your specific volume. Well, what is your specific volume? We have negative 4 degrees Celsius and a quality of 0 
So I'll turn to table A10 here, which is the properties of saturated R134A. We know we're saturated because our quality is between 0 and 1. Um, anything that is 0, 1, or anything in between will be from this table here. Um, so we have negative 4, and we have somewhere between these two numbers here. 4, negative 4 degrees Celsius, and between these two saturated vapors, or sorry, sorry these two um, specific volumes. And so we have the formula of the specific volume at state one equals the specific volume of the saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference in the specific volumes of saturated vapor and saturated liquid. So VG minus VF. Now we can plug in what we have here. So we have VF equals 0 0.7644. That's going to be times 10 to the negative third. Pay attention there to the bottom of the table. Plus the quality, which was given to us as 0 0.2, times the difference here of 0 0.0794 minus 0 0.7644 times 10 to the negative third once again. So again, down over here, you know, you divide your VF by 1000. And so that's what I'm doing here. So now if we just plug this into our calculator, you'll have that specific volume for state one is equal to 0 0.0165. And then, you know, it'd be cubic meters per unit kilogram. So let's fill that in over here. We'll have 0 0.0165. I'm going to carry the units in here. So we uh, keep track of everything and we make sure that we did this correctly. So if we have, we obviously would want a unit of meters here when it's all said and done. So we're going to make sure that that's exactly what we get. So next thing we have is the mass flow rate, which is 0 0.1 kilograms per second. And we're going to divide that by pi times V1, which was 7 meters per second. And now we'll close the square root of everything. And now let's check out our units and make sure that they check out. So we have kilogram times kilogram, those cancel out. And now we have a meter cube per second and then a meter per second. So those seconds are going to cancel out because the second would move to the, to the numerator, the second would drop down to the denominator, and therefore they cancel out. So now what you're left is, is you're left with m3 in the numerator and m in the bottom. So this is going to cancel out. This is going to turn into squared. And that's all of our units here. But because we have the square root, it's going to take the square root of the, m, of the uh, m2 and it's going to just turn it into meters, which is what we want for uh, our diameter there. So now if you plug this in your calculator, you'll find that the diameter of this pipe equals 0 0.0173 meters. And that is your answer to part A. And now for part B, we're looking for the velocity at the exit, which is V2, some number in meters per second. Now you may be tempted to use the first law of thermodynamics, which has 0 equals Q minus W plus the mass flow rate times the difference in enthalpy and velocity and elevation change. However, you don't have the heat transfer for this evaporator, and so therefore, I can't actually use that equation. But what I could do is I could reuse one of these equations here, and I'd be able to derive the velocity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this equation here, because this equation here seems to have everything that I need or could get to solve for the, uh, for the velocity at state 2. So we'll have, because we're at state 2, we'll have specific volume 2 equals the velocity at 2 times your pi d squared. d is constant because we have a constant diameter across this pipe. And this is over 4. Sorry for all these typos here. Divided by 4 and divide that all by the mass flow rate, which of course is constant from 1 to 2. So let's rearrange for the velocity. So we'll have that the velocity at state 2 equals the specific volume of state 2 times the mass flow rate. And now we're going to divide that by the area, which is pi d squared over 4, and close that whole thing there. So now we want to plug in what we have. And so for state 2, we have negative 4 degrees Celsius and 1.0 as our quality. So we'll go back to this table here. So at negative 4 degrees Celsius, a 1.0 quality is a saturated vapor, or 0.0794. So therefore we have V2 equals, there should be a V here, equals 0 0.0794 cubic meters per kilogram. So we have 0 0.0794 cubic meters per kilogram. Multiply that by your mass flow rate of 0 0.1 kilograms per second. 
divide all of that by pi, and we solved for d in part a, so that's 0 0.0173 meters. Square that, divide it by 4. And now you want to plug this whole thing into your calculator. And when you do, you'll have that velocity at state 2 equals 33.78. And now let's get our unit here. So we have kilograms and kilograms canceling out. We're left with cubic meters per second on top and then square meters on the bottom. So these are going, these two units here will cancel out with that cubic function there and we'll just be left with meters per second, which is in fact the unit for velocity. So we have V2 equals 33.78 meters per second.